Hello everyone and welcome to the Chrissy B Show. We are the UK's only TV program that's dedicated to your mental health and well-being. So today we're taking your well-being and putting it under the spotlight with our great mix of experts. Our resident makeup artist Sani Sorma will be giving us her tips on how to naturally lighten your hair. And we also have Chelsea Baker on, on how to be a PR genius. Our weekly regular Dr. Rob Hicks is on hand to answer all of your medical questions. And fashion stylist Desiree Ahanunu will be talking about the latest occasion wear trends. And at the end of the show, I'll be giving you my top tips for learning to love yourself. Now, taking care of ourselves is important, but is there a difference between caring for ourselves and loving ourselves? Well, the answer is yes. While self-care is categorized as caring for our physical selves, self-love is loving our personal selves, and that unfortunately is in decline. With 75% of girls with low self-esteem reportedly engaging in negative activities such as disordered eating, cutting, bullying, smoking or drinking when feeling badly about themselves, compared to 25% of girls with high self-esteem, it is more important now than ever to learn to love and accept ourselves for who we are and not the idealised, unattainable versions of people we want to be. But what do you guys think? We went to Twitter to find out. Gentle says, take care of yourself, your mind, your soul, and your body because self-love is the most important thing. You're great and I love you. Al Yinas understands, she says, I'm just in my own little world of self-love and happiness. I wish you all the same. Barbie gives some solid advice. She says, don't ever lose self-love trying to love someone else. Bohemian Babes agrees, she says, you have to live for you and do things for your own sake. That doesn't make you a bad person. Self-care is the highest form of self-love. Saffron Barker points out something we touch on just now. Self-love has very little to do with how you feel about your outer self. It's about accepting all of yourself. And Ohano shares his perspective saying, self-respect is the greatest sign of self-love. Well, some very interesting comments there. And of course, we do love to hear from you, our lovely viewers, on your comments about past shows or any, any other comments, actually. And this one is from Caring Mind 16 and um, they are commenting on our Young People and Mental Health show. And they say, so important to raise awareness of mental health in young people. Social media can be damaging if uncontrolled. So thank you very much. And if you have a comment, you can email us on info at chrissybshow.tv or just comment on our social media channels. So beauty really is skin deep, but we never shy an opportunity to show you our favorite tips and tricks to enhance your assets as beauty expert Sani Sorma is about to show us. Welcome to the show, Sunny. Thank you very much. So take us through your tips for today. So I'm gonna talk about how to lighten your hair naturally. Okay. So I am in the process of doing this, so I thought actually it might be interesting for other people to hear about it too. So is it working? It is working. I yeah, feel like I have some highlights. Yeah. I specifically didn't put any product in today so that I could kind of like Show, show off. you, yeah, show <laughs> off my color. It is a little bit lighter. Yeah, it is actually, I did notice. And what I have been doing is the first tip, because this is great for hair that is quite strong. If your hair is fragile or dry, don't do it. But if you've got normal or greasy hair, this is amazing. So lemons, squeeze one whole lemon, like mm -hmm. completely, get as much juice out, potentially take the pips out if you can, and just put it on your wet hair after you washed your hair, spread it on your wet hair and then let, let it dry naturally in the sun if possible because okay. sun really kind of makes it work yeah. or use your hair dryer if there is no sun like I basically leave it on for an hour or two wash it out and then slowly it starts becoming lighter really? and it's kind of cool toned um, highlights yeah however if you do want a little bit warmer highlights another great one is chamomile tea mm. so I <laughs> you can combine these two as well I've done that too okay so take a bag of chamomile tea um, if you want to be extravagant put two or three put it in your teacup pour hot water and really let it seep for I would say I let it sit for at least 10 or 15 minutes because the water needs to cool down as well yeah yeah take tea bags out and then I put them in a spray bottle, you know, one of those that oh, hair good. dresses use. But you can just kind of like comb it yeah. through your hair. Yeah. And again, that actually leaves your hair quite soft. 
So you can just blow dry it and go about your day. Leave the chamomile in your hair. Okay. Like, uh, it doesn't really smell of anything. I mean, there's a slight smell. What if you mix it with a lemon, though? Then no. Then you no. have to rinse it out. Yeah, because the lemon okay. makes it a bit crunchy. Oh. <laughs> That's the thing I asked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll get complaints from our viewers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so if it's just the chamomile, so it's okay yeah. to leave and to leave it in. in. And yeah. it's kind of a herbal smell. It's not too offensive, at least. To me, it's not too no. offensive at all. Now, the next one would be great for you as well, because you've got darker hair, is mm. adding cinnamon to your conditioner. So shampoo your hair in the shower. Your normal conditioner, put a normal amount and add a teaspoon of cinnamon on it. Oh. Make a paste and then put it in, but leave it more like you would a uh, deep conditioner. So okay. let's say for five minutes. Yeah. And immediately- It's time to clean the shower. Just, yeah, that's what I do. I clean the shower when I'm in the shower. It's oh, very good really, tip. Really that good. is a very good tip. Yeah, see, my, hang on, move okay. on. My, my tips for today, so when you're in the shower, <laughs> wet your shower first. That's really good. Then, while you're in the shower, and you spray it, of course, and then while you're in the shower, you can give it a good scrub and clean and really get in there. And I'm just totally like... doing that tonight. Okay, it's really I am good. Gonna do that. Yeah. I spray it before I go in it and just leave it for a bit, and then while I'm doing the other bits and pieces, That's and then I get good. in there. I am doing that. Okay. I'm not putting the cinnamon in, but I am doing oh, okay. that. <laughs> but the cinnamon trick, you do need to maybe do it three or four times before you start, but it's kind of warm, so it's yeah. beautiful, so it'll be more caramelly kind of highlights. And if you want to, you can leave it on for 20 minutes. You will smell like a cinnamon roll, but that's oh, kind of nice. It's a nice that's, smell. That's kind of nice. Yeah. This one is uh, amazing if you've got dry or fragile hair, honey. So yes. either honey on its own, it's kind of sticky. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you want it a little bit less sticky and easier to spread, then add olive oil. The olive oil won't actually lighten your hair at all, but it okay. will condition your hair. Oh, and it's easier because, you know, honey is very, very sticky to put in your hair. Okay. So it's a little bit easier than to kind of like put it on. And then it's a deep conditioning treatment nice. and a hair lightener. Now, combining all of these, I have tried once. It was a big old mess. <laughs> So I wouldn't do, do all of that at once. Okay. I wouldn't do all of that at once. And last but not least, so if you have very dark hair, I think even darker than you, literally, if you have black hair, um, henna. Mm -hmm. So henna was something that I used to dye my hair with when I was like 13 or 14, and I it would go really bright red, like oh. like orangey red, like your background yeah. red. Um, however, on dark hair, it actually lightens the hair. Okay. It's, a, it's a herbal paste. It won't damage your hair at all. It's beautiful, beautiful. Um, and you leave it on for quite a long time. I think I used to leave it on for three or four hours. But if you've got dark hair, it brings really beautiful warm highlights nice. to the hair. But I think it's like literally just black or black brown hair. So okay. even darker, a lot darker than yours as well. Mm. But it's very nice to your cuticles and it makes your hair very shiny. Oh, I've got to try that myself then. Would it be good for my, was it not dark uh, enough? Not no, okay, dark I'll, I'll try that. I'll try the chamomile. Yeah, I think chamomile for you, Sunny, yes. thank you. You are very welcome. So just going back to my tips about cleaning your shower, <laughs> just please make sure that your bathroom is well ventilated because of the steam and the chemicals can actually knock you out, but that nearly happened to me once. So if you are going to try that at home. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, Sammy. You are very we'll welcome. welcome. Again next time. Yes. Thank you. All right, guys. So after the break, we're going to be talking to Dr. Rob Hicks, who's here to answer all of your medical questions, including this one. Hi, Rob. What's the best way to get rid of intestinal parasites? Find out the answer after this break. back to the Chrissy B show everyone so now it's time for doctor's answers with our resident doctor Rob Hicks welcome to the show Rob hi Chris how are you doing I'm good how are you fantastic at the moment we have lots of questions for you ready I'm ready okay so let, let's answer the one that we asked before the break and this person says last summer I went traveling to South America afterwards I began having severe digestive troubles and now I'm pretty sure I picked up some parasites down there what's the best way to get rid of intestinal parasites sounds horrible well if it Sorry. is intestinal parasites it won't be very pleasant at oh. all but the first thing you need to do is confirm whether that's the case and the simple thing to do is to have a checkup with your, with your doctor who will run a, a sample of your poo 
of your, of your stool is what we call it magically to test to see whether there are you know parasites or a, another infection present causing your symptoms if that is the case then you'll be offered um, treatment usually tablet treatment to eradicate them but you have to think about the fact that actually it may not be parasites um, irritable bowel syndrome commonly occurs after a gut upset, a gut infection. So it might be that the symptoms you're suffering are actually that. But it might be something totally coincidental to your trip to South America and, and you were going to develop a, a gut problem anyway, whether you've been there or not. So these are the sorts of things that will be investigated by your doctor. Be prepared. So talk about your symptoms, how long you've had them, you know, whether they come and go, whether they're there all the time. You know, that actually helps the doctor to get a better picture. Um, and then with the test results, you'll have a final diagnosis and get the right treatment if, it's, if you need treatment at all. Brilliant. Okay, next question. Uh, Dear Dr. Rob, is it possible for certain foods to trigger a fit of coughing? I have noticed that when I eat sweet dried fruit, such as a big piece of dried papaya or dried pineapple, I like the way they just say a big piece of dried, I guess. <laughs> it seems to coincide with a lot of dry coughing as if my throat were just irritated. Could I be imagining this or does coughing work this way for some people? The reality is, is yes. <laughs> yes, it does work this way for some people. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing increasing numbers of people suffering these symptoms and they're, it's often related to something called oral allergy syndrome mm -hmm. or it's some, that's sometimes called pollen food syndrome and it, it happens in people who actually have hay fever or have had hay fever in, in previous years and, and why it happens is that in some foods there are the same allergens, the things that trigger allergy responses, as there are in pollen. So apple, for example, kiwi fruit, strawberries are, are common ones in the UK that trigger this sort of symptom. So you get a sore throat, you might get coughing, you might get you know, sort of itchy, tingly lips or, or tongue. So it's those sorts of allergy uh, symptoms. So yes, I doubt you're imagining this. I think this is a real thing. Mm -hmm. But what you do need to do is to have a checkup with your doctor to confirm that that's the case. Um, because it might be something totally different. It might be, you know, that you have asthma or you have another condition that, and it's a coincidence that it's happening alongside those foods. So have a check up, get to the bottom of the problem, and then you'll be given the advice on how you take things forward. Next question, Rob. My wife has very high cholesterol for her age, and she has just been diagnosed as having a thyroid growth. If she does have to have it removed, what are the effects this might have on her cholesterol? You know what, I've never been asked that question before. Oh, really? First yeah. time for everything? First time I've heard that question. <laughs> um, and I think, you know, it's a, it's a fascinating question. I mean, the reality is, is that, you know, d d having high cholesterol um, and having a thyroid growth are not directly linked. However, mm -hmm. if she has to have her thyroid gland removed, then because the thyroid gland is, re you know, it controls our metabolism, then she, she will become hypothyroid, so she'll have an underactive thyroid. If the metabolism, therefore, is, is lowered, she's less likely to clear her, her cholesterol so easily from her, her, her blood system. Mm -hmm. So if she has the gland removed, the logical scientific thing is that she will then find that her cholesterol goes up. However, because most people become hypothyroid, so they have an underactive thyroid once they've had it removed, what we do is we give them replacement hormone to balance it out. So therefore, she shouldn't have any effect on her cholesterol at all, is, is, the, is, the, is the sort of simple answer. As long as she's answer. taking her medication. As long as she's taking her medication yeah. and indeed eating a healthy diet that's low in you know, saturated fats mm -hmm. and high in fiber, because those are very important to keep cholesterol under control. Okay, interesting. Okay, next question. Thank you for that question, by the way. Um, Hi, Rob, I feel very tired all the time. Could it be my diabetes? I was diagnosed last year and I'm now 22. The answer is yes, it could be a diabetes, but it could be a whole host of other things, which is why it's important that actually you have a checkup with your doctor to try and pinpoint what's causing your tiredness. Um, tiredness can be easily related to stress, anxiety and depression, 
all these things can be managed and treated successfully. Um, the tiredness can be related to another medical condition like anemia or an underactive thyroid gland, for example. Um, it can be a side effect of some medications, or it could be actually a, a result of the fact that you're just not getting enough sleep or you're not getting enough quality, good quality sleep, or maybe your diet is inadequate, or maybe actually you're drinking too much alcohol and that's leaving you tired. So, so there's lots of different reasons for tiredness in addition to diabetes not being controlled properly. And that's why I would urge you actually to, to get a, a full checkup to identify and pinpoint you know, what's causing your tiredness so that it can be treated. Okay, next question, Rob. My prosthetic foot was built in the early 90s. I know the field has advanced a lot. Should I look into replacing it with a more current piece or is it not worth it yet? What a really good question. Yeah. That's a really good question. And, and actually, rather than give you an answer, I'm going to throw some questions back at you that I think you should consider. Um, one is, is your current prosthetic foot causing you any problems at all? Because if it's not, then maybe there's no need to change. What's the life expectancy that you've been told of your prosthetic foot? You know, is it nearing the end of its life expectancy or is it a case of it can go on for years and years and years without needing to be changed? If you were to have it changed, you know, is it because it would enable you to do additional activities, for example, that you can't do currently? So those are the sort of things that you, know, you should be thinking about before you actually speak to the prosthetic specialist about what the options are for you as an individual. There is an adage in life generally which if, is, if it ain't broke, don't try and fix it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an important thing to think about in your situation. Yeah, definitely. Okay, thanks for that question. Uh, next one, we've got a couple more minutes. Yep. I had a hysterectomy for uterine cancer last month and I seem to be healing properly, which is good. Can you give me a schedule for safely resuming physical activities. I especially want to swim, but I don't know when it's safe to do so. That's quite, that's yeah. quite a loaded question, isn't yeah. it? Well, I think, it's, it's, schedule now. I think it's important, an yeah. important question. And I yeah. think what, that's one of the things that you should discuss with your surgeon, yeah, yeah. because a lot of this depends on what type of operation you had to remove your uterus, which is the womb for, for this you know, the cancer. So generally speaking, abdominal operations um, take between six and eight weeks to recover. Um, if you had it done vaginally or with a laparoscopic approach, which is like keyhole surgery, then it can take less, you know, less weeks, uh, fewer weeks to, to recover. Um, and that's why it's important to speak to the surgeon so you know exactly what procedure you had and therefore what recovery time to expect. Um, it is very important during the recovery time to rest as much as possible and not to do any sort of you know, um, strenuous exercise. And that includes lifting heavy bags of shopping, for example, you know, to give the wound a, a chance to heal properly. Um, light walking is usually fine but again check with your surgeon check with your doctor um, and often we say you know day by day maybe week by week increase the amount of walking because that not only helps you emotionally but also helps you physically as well and questions like swimming and going back to work again it depends on the type of procedure you, you've had and indeed how quickly um, your specialist thinks you're healing. I just, just wanted to comment, I think it's actually really nice that she's sort of getting back into or wanted to get back into mm. normal activities as soon as possible because obviously it's been quite, must have been quite an ordeal, you know, being diagnosed with cancer in the first place and then, so it's nice that she's... And exercise yeah. is not just good for us physically, emotionally, yeah. it gives us a real lift, so it, it's, a, it's a really good question and a really yeah. good thing to think about. Brilliant. Okay, Rob, so one last question for today, I think. So this person's saying, hi, Rob, what are some trade secrets and useful tips for easing period pain? I've heard hot baths are good, but I'm not keen on the idea of bathing during that time of the month, understandably. Yeah, I mean, hot baths are good. Another option, of course, is a, is, is a warm shower mm -hmm. if, if the person's happy, if the woman's happy to, to go in the shower at that time of the month. Some of the other things, obviously, you've heard about painkillers and anti-inflammatories, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. So things like paracetamol and ibuprofen, which are available over the counter from the pharmacist. Obviously, always check that it's OK for you to take those. But the other sort of things are exercise are, are, are very good. Um, light abdominal massage, so you can just gently rub, rub your hand over your tummy. You might want to take a hot water bottle, wrap that in, in, a, in, a, in a towel and place that over the, over the, 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 you know, the uncomfortable part of your tummy. That's a good, good 
good thing as well. Relaxation therapy, really good, whatever works for you really. It might be yoga, it might be deep breathing exercises, it might be simply going off and making a cup of tea, you know, or watching some reruns of our show. That, you know, that, yes. it, it, something like that might, might, might do the job for you. So those are the sorts of things um, that, you know, you, not everything works for every woman. It's often the case of trial and error, but you, very, invariably women find one thing or more that works for them. Rob, thank you very much, and we'll see you again next week. My pleasure. And if you have a medical question for Rob, you can email us on doctor at chrissybshow.tv. Well, stay tuned because after the break, we have on Chelsea Baker, who'll be talking about the importance of PR. But first, what percentage of people use social media to check out a product before buying it? Is it A, 75%, B, 62%, or C, 89%? If you think you know the answer, stay tuned to see after the break if you are correct. Hi, I'm Chrissy B and my show is all about improving your mental health and being happy. Join me every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 10 p.m. on my channel Sky 203. Visit chrissybshow.tv for more information and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Chrissy B Show. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chrissy B Show and on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. Welcome back to The Chrissy B Show, everyone. Now, before the break, I asked you what percentage of people use social media to check out a product before buying it. Is it A, 75%, B, 62%, or C, 89%? The answer is 75% of customers say they use social media as part of the buying process. Well, here to fill us in on how to become a PR guru is resident mentoring and public speaking expert, Chelsea Baker. Welcome back to the show, Chelsea. Hello, Chrissy. Great to be here again. So we always love your advice, Chelsea. It's really, really helpful. So today is all about PR and how to sort of sell ourselves, really. Can you tell us a bit more? Absolutely. PR is essential for growing, for building and enhancing your reputation. It might be that, you know, you're an individual growing your own personal profile. Mm -hmm. And also if you're a company or you, if you most importantly run your own business. So PR is worth a fortune. It's worth more than any paid for advertisement. You know, it's, mm -hmm. people believe it because it's it's you know it's featured stories and it's just absolutely wonderful if you can get it right it will be worth its weight in gold mm -hmm. the biggest problem we've got is that people really do not know how to do PR okay what, what would you say are the common mistakes and that people make the biggest mistakes are people write a press release and they just send it out and it's just there's so many things wrong with it from it not being relevant to the gra grammar the punctuation not being right but they've targeted the wrong company they've targeted the wrong media outlet mm -hmm. so you know the it all really boils down to what's so important that i should write about you why are you newsworthy mm -hmm. and if we were to really sit here and, you know, obviously I do this with my business mentoring, I sit there with a the client, I say, right, what's the news? What's mm. so important? Why does the rest of the world or national or local newspapers, why do we need to know about this news? And often the answer is we don't. It's absolutely useless. Okay. So I work with them and we, we add weight to a story and mm. we, we craft something that is, is, is timely, is relevant, and is, is newsworthy, so that it, it's got that human interest story, so the rest yeah. of the, 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 you know, the, the country should know about it. Mm -hmm. And so I think that really people these days, they, um, we're, we're actually in a great time for PR. Because with uh, social media, you know, booming so much, visual content and, and you know, people need stories. Journalists are crying out for stories. So we're in a great opportunity. And, uh, you know, they're crying out for stories, but people okay. just are creating the wrong stories. So how about some top tips now, Chelsea? Yeah, and before we get to my top tips on PR, what I want to also just explain a little bit for the viewers out there 
is getting into the journalist mindset. So there's some key frustrations that journalists really do have to go through. And uh, I was reading a report recently by, from um, my news desk and they interviewed 2000 journalists on their key frustrations. One of the frustrations is that there's not enough relevant, good quality images mm -hmm. you know, out there. And that's one of their frustrations. But another very interesting point here is that one of the most influential factors that decides whether a journalist follows up your story or not is the credibility of the sender, the person, the sender, the company. Okay. So when I work with my clients, I make sure that before they're even going to go and start, you know, trying to contact media outlets, is that their LinkedIn profile is looking great and that they have their press pack, they have their media pack and that all the company information is succinct and great on, you know, what the company does, why, when it started, mm. all that relevant information. You need to have that in order first. So the number one most influential factor is the source. Okay. Who has it come from and are they credible? So you need to have all your social media outlets and everything all perfect. Yeah. Okay. So onto the PR tips. Um, I've come up with an acronym which is PR points. Mm -hmm. So very interesting. We touched on it earlier, but photo. When you think about a photograph that you're going to send with your press release or you know entice a journalist to write about you, Take that picture on its own and it should be able to tell a story okay. without any text, without any words or any explanation. So stand alone, have a look at your picture that you're sending in, you think is newsworthy and say, what does it say? Mm -hmm. So a having point. a good photo is absolutely key and it's all planned. You know, half the photographs that you see in the newspaper, they've got you know, photographers, they've got background stylists, you name it plan your photo opportunity. Mm. So that is number one, which is photo. Brilliant. R is relevant. So when we talk about relevant, you know, if, if I don't know, if you have a business, um, it's a product that's, that's suitable for pets and you're going to try and put it in a, the Times Higher Education supplement, there's no relevance there. It sounds obvious, but yet if it was that obvious, why are hundreds of thousands of people targeting the wrong <laughs> media outlets every, well, I can literally say every second. So relevance is absolutely key. Um, if you don't have, uh, if you haven't targeted the relevant media, you will be rejected. Mm -hmm. And that is a fact. So think about the fit. Is it a business magazine? Are you, have you made a, a fortune in sales on a product? Is it something, a launch of a product, you know, and that will be suitable for a business mm -hmm. media? Because we've got local press, we've got national press, we've got international and global. Mm -hmm. Who are you targeting? So relevance, and it really must be relevant. Okay. On um, PR points, the P for points is pitch. Now, somebody recently read out to me, it was actually this week, um, a little pitch that they were going to call one of the nationals and you know, say, yeah, this is, this, is, this is our idea for the story. And it really wasn't a very good pitch at all. So it, it needs reshaping, but if you're going to ring up a national newspaper, I have done this many times, and you know I'm very privileged to have hotline numbers into the nationals. But I remember specifically one time ringing the national one of the, one of the certain lines, and they literally picked up the phone with, "What's the news? Oh my goodness! What's the news? What is it? What's the news?" <laughs> And I was absolutely dumbfounded. I mean, usually it's like, yeah, what do you want? But it yeah, was yeah. so fast. And yeah. I just, I mean, this was the launch for a national mentoring day. And I just literally off the top of my head, I went, um, um, it was something about um, hundreds of more mentors needed. There's a huge crisis in the market. And I literally just said it. But my goodness. Um, and then I followed it up with sending yeah, it through and yeah. it, it all worked out okay. But my goodness, you have to be that yeah, quick if you're wow. going to make any phone calls. They don't usually give out the telephone numbers, but having a pitch ready. And sometimes we're looking for that. The, the journalists are looking for that Cinderella story. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you were out of work, you were homeless, you were this, and now you have done good mm -hmm. and you have turned into this. So that's what we call the Cinderella story. But you've got to have your pitch planned out perfectly yeah. before you even think about ringing up a magazine mm -hmm. or a 
um, a newspaper. Uh, on PR points, O is opportunity. I think that there has never been an opportunity better than today to go and get PR. To, you know, really, you have such a huge array of online digital mm -hmm. magazines, um, more television shows than ever before. Mm -hmm. So now is a great opportunity. And it's up to you, you know, to really figure out what's my news and where can I put it? Because there's so many opportunities out there. And of course, it's discussing as well, perhaps, you know, with your mentor, with somebody who's in the know, what your objective is. Do you want to get... 2,000 more subscribers to your show? Do you want to get more likes on mm -hmm. some of your videos? Do you want to enhance your reputation? Is it dwindling? Do you want to become, um, uh, use PR to become a market leader or have more dominance in the market? Do you perhaps need PR to fix a broken reputation and mm -hmm. elevate you? Why are you doing this? What do you want PR for? And you have to be careful here. You know, I've been on the front cover of many magazines um, and had millions and millions of pounds worth of PR. But what for? Mm -hmm. What are you doing it for? So um, I've had some people who've had, you know, I've worked on their big campaigns, but actually they don't have a product ready to sell yet. Oh, um, you know, that was that was mm -hmm. a, a long time ago. But you need to shift products and sales from this. You need to, you know, uh, it's just a key thing. So you need to have everything ready. Uh, I is importance. Yeah, so why is this important? What impact are you gonna make with your story? And is it interesting? So impact, interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people, if you were to say, right, this is my story, and you start asking family or friends or other people in the media, you know, is this newsworthy? They're gonna say, no, it isn't. Mm -hmm. So try and run your idea past, past somebody before. Okay. N is new newsworthy, new and newsworthy. Give me something new to write about, new research, new findings, new statistics, um, new discoveries. Why are you newsworthy? Why are you newsworthy to the rest of the nation? When you can answer that, you will get press. Mm -hmm. T is timely. And when we think about being timely, what's trending at the moment? Is it summer? Is it ice creams? What's happened in the major news that you could tie your product or your service in? Is it mental health? Is there being a big push with that? How can you tie it in? So being timely and looking at trends or looking at something that's really hitting the big news, you can be an opinion leader and really go for it and you'll get footage. Uh, sales, of course, is absolutely key. We touched on it earlier, but why are you doing this? Why are you putting so much effort into PR? So S is for sales and also remember to be succinct. So, you know, why are you doing this? What's it going to lead to? Because, you know, PR, it's got to be about S is for strategy as well. You yeah. know, what you've got to have a plan with this. And so many people come to me and say, right, this is our PR strategy. And it's just dire. Um, you know, you need to, 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 to speak with somebody who has done it before and knows, you know, I speak from experience. I've, I've run all the campaigns for National Mentoring Day, as you know. I've had over one and a half million pounds worth of publicity myself. So it's knowing what press release worked and why it got in. If you can tick off all my points, you know, you really have got a great starting advantage. And PR is worth its weight in gold. It can mm -hmm. propel you. Absolutely. It's like a, a media frenzy when it really works well. So remember to have perfect grammar so that they can trust the source. Yeah. And that's it. That's it. Brilliant. Chelsea, <laughs> thank you so much. That was really helpful. Thank you. My pleasure. Well, guys, don't go away because after the break, I'll be giving you my top tips on how you can learn to love yourself. And we have stylist Desiree Ahanonu who will be giving us some of the latest fashion trend advice. Welcome back to the Chrissy B Show, everyone. So now we have our fashion stylist, Desiree Ahanonu, who'll be talking about special occasion wear. 
Welcome to the show. Hello, Christy. Lovely to have you back. Yes, I'm so happy to be back, as usual. So you've got lots of advice for our viewers today. Yes, yes. So yes, take it I away. Do. Okay, so we're in August, the month of August, and just left July, where there's so many special occasions. Literally every month there's christenings, there's weddings, there's birthday celebrations. So I mm. thought today I'd share with you a few tips and of ideas what you can wear. If you're the kind of person like, what can I wear to this event? Or what kind yeah. of, because sometimes you might feel I look underdressed or overdressed so mm. just here to share a few tips with you guys today okay so looking Let's forward to see seeing it. it so first we're starting with a peplum style mm -hmm. and these are the kind of dresses at the bottom where they they tend to come out this is really really popular because peplum also have at the waist which isn't really out in this season but it's now it's usually at the bottom and you can either have maxi length one which is obviously to the floor or midi ones and I always think to a wedding or to a christening, it's really nice to go for a mid-length dress because obviously it's a bit more mm. of a... It's not overdressed, Yeah, it's it? not yeah. overdressed mm -hmm. and it's not too short and it's not too... I think it's more yeah. appropriate for the occasion. Mm -hmm. um, lovely colours, especially for the... Well, we're supposed to be in summer, but... Yeah. yeah. Okay. The sun is here and there, coming yeah. to see us now here and there. <laughs> um, so I think yellows, nice blues and... Um, yeah, it's really, really good tip for those ladies who want to look really nice in a statement dress. Pet plum style is definitely in. Okay, nice. Really nice. Um, next is um, lace. Lace, you can never go wrong with yeah, lace dresses. Yeah, never goes never. out of fashion. Yeah, and you could wear them to, like I said, to birthdays, even to funerals, um, because it's it's just, it gives that the kind of etiquette look, lovely mm. look, um, still fashionable, still classy, and the pop of colour just gives it a different kind of look, and because sometimes you might say, oh, if I wear this colour, I might look a little bit older, or if I mm. wear this, so you can choose whether it's blue, whether it's Cream Nude, which I really, really like this one. It's got two different layers there. Um, mm -hmm. Lace is always a lovely, lovely um, item to wear to any special occasion, because I think you can never go wrong with lace. If mm -hmm. you're like, okay, I don't know what to wear, get a lace yeah, dress, yeah, get a lace top, and you'll be perfect. You'll be perfectly fine yeah. for that occasion. Next, um, fascinators. I think I, w I wore a fascinator to an event last year or the year before, and I thought it was just so lovely. Everyone had fascinators. Really? I don't I think like it just them. Looks, I don't know what it is. I think, do you know what? I think you can't wear them every day. Yeah. I think you should just wear them once a year or okay. something. But I think it's, especially like we had the um, Royal Ascot, Ascot um, recently, and I just, I always love looking at all of the outfits that they mm -hmm. wear. I do think it looks really classy. I think if you want to look edgy and all, as well as classy, I think Fascinators are such a statement piece. Um, they have so many, you've got the lace with the lace, or you've just got the bow. I prefer the smaller ones, because I think the yeah, bigger yeah, ones yeah. is a bit <laughs> too much. Yeah, it's a bit too much. Everyone will be looking at me in the room. Um, but Fascinators are really lovely and elegant, and for most of these occasions, it's usually mm -hmm. you want to look nice and elegant and classy. So fascinators, yeah, it's definitely a good tip as well to wear. Um, next, we're going to speak about men. Mm -hmm. um, I think men can never go wrong with a tuxedo. Um, some of these are okay. Depending personally. on where they're going. <laughs> yeah, depending on where they're going. Okay. You can't be a bit too, you know, I'm the man in the room today, especially if it's a wedding. Maybe just try and turn it down a little bit. <laughs> um, but tuxes, you can never go wrong with tuxes. If you have a special event, maybe someone's 50th or your 50th, you know, a tux would be really, really nice if you're a man to wear. Um, bow ties, I think, always look lovely. They always look very very smart so I think you can never go wrong with a bow tie and I think any color mm -hmm. with a bow tie just makes you look so smart and sophisticated yeah, yeah. anyway so tux 100% for the men next um, is slim fit now I think slim fit the, the slim fit style has just taken over fashion for men 100% like in jeans in trousers every style I, I'm a bit I don't. I like it sometimes, but sometimes I think they exaggerate. I a think bit it looks much. nice on slim build men. Yes. Because if we're looking at this lovely gentleman here, <laughs> I just think it. Yeah, I don't think yeah. it looks as a different. I think a different kind of style yes. would suit him. I, I agree with you because yeah. I think slim yeah. fit is not for everybody, <laughs> but I do like the look that yeah, it does give. Yeah. And as you can see, they've all got no socks on. Yeah. <laughs> We've all got no socks on. This seems to be the fashion, the style now. But slim fit jeans, slim fit chinos are perfect. Perfect for any evening, afternoon, mm. even if it's a morning 
gathering or meeting with friends, slim fit is definitely the way yeah. forward for men. That's not any of your relatives. No, 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 you're not. Okay, no, it's okay. <laughs> no, no it's one you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, next, um, linen. Now, mm. I don't really see my Miami Vice. Linen. Hmm? Miami Vice. My, yeah, my, it's true. It's actually true. I don't really see like men wearing linen. However, recently it's been coming back into fashion. Obviously in the summer and autumn, you're a bit, you can get a bit hot in the usual yeah, yeah. suits. So there's, these are really That's nice a good idea, and actually. light. Yeah. yeah, and the thing mm. is they can look nice. Yeah. You, you can have the darker colours, you can have the lighter colours. Oh, I like that one, first one. Yeah, this one's really nice. I like mm. the way that he's put it with the that colour the waistcoat really, and everything yeah. Nice. yeah so if you maybe for example because I know for example my husband gets quite hot in his suits and mm -hmm. things and linen I think is a good material to wear to go for for a suit okay next um, we just have the pocket handkerchief oh, yes. to finish off a look for all men I think even if it's a simple look um, simple suit simple shirt just add a pocket um, handkerchief in there and you're sorted nice Wonderful. Thank you yeah. so much, Desiree. Thank you. And we shall see you again next time. Yes, thank, thank you for having me. So now you know what to wear to special <laughs> occasions. Yes. <laughs> All right, guys. So now it's actually time for my own tips for self-love. So let's get straight to my points. The first one is to heal the past. So this one is extremely important. If you want to love yourself and there are things from your past that are still affecting you, it's really, really important to deal with them. If that means speaking up about what you've been through, if it means um, getting professional help, if it means forgiveness, maybe that you've been holding on to so many things for so many years and it's all there and it's making you feel bad and heavy and all those horrible negative feelings, just, you know, forgive. I know it's, it's like sometimes, sometimes people say, well, how do I forgive? It's a decision, that's all it is. It's a decision, a deciding to move on, deciding not to let what happened ruin your life anymore. And if you have to say it, say it out loud. If it's, you know, someone that's, that's hurt you, say the person's name and say, so-and-so, I forgive you and try and move on after that. The second point is, don't fear the future. Now, sometimes people have this obsession with knowing everything that's gonna happen. They want to find out, they want to, you know, to get people to read their future, when actually it's, it's something that you don't need to fear. As long as you are doing what you can to improve your life now, you don't actually need to know what's going to happen later on. And actually, I think, you know, if we were to know everything that's going to happen in the future, it would affect so many things. You would probably maybe be afraid of certain things or maybe you wouldn't bother trying a lot with certain things because you think something's going to happen. Um, there's, there's so many elements to it. It's actually, I think it's more exciting when we don't know what's around the corner, but we are just, you know, living every day. Of course, you're going to make plans. You're going to, to, to um, you know, have goals and aspirations for what you want to achieve and work towards those things, but you don't know, need to know exactly what's going to happen. I think that just puts unnecessary stress on a human being and it's not really doing much for self-love. The third point is to think. So this is about improving yourself as well. So why do you have certain behaviors? Where are they coming, coming from? And can you actually change the negative behaviors that you have? So I would say, yes, you can always change. Um, but a lot of people sometimes, they owe it to themselves to do a bit more thinking and not just go with the flow and just think, okay, this is who I am. That's, these are my mistakes. I can't change certain things. But actually, when we really take a good think and look at ourselves, we can actually change a lot about ourselves. But first of all, we have to understand where certain behaviors are coming from. So if, for example, certain, a certain thing maybe that your partner says to you makes you explode or makes you really angry, why why is that? Where is that anger coming from? Trace it back. Don't just think, oh, this is a part of me. I just get really agitated when you talk about that thing. No, it's not. It's, there's something behind it. So you owe it to yourself and those around you to actually do a bit of digging and find out where certain things are coming from and dealing with them. The next point is to look after your health. Now, we did speak earlier that sort of physical activity and all those things are about self-care rather than self-love. But I've included this one here because I think looking after your health for other reasons can actually come under self-love because if, if you 
if you're just looking after your health because you want to look good, then it's, it's more sort of to do with the care side of things. But if you're looking after your health so you can enjoy your life more, you can enjoy your relationships more, you can be a healthy, strong person so that you can make the most out of life and the most out of your goals and dreams. And that is, is really important for self-love as well. My next point is to appreciate the now. So not enough people um, are, are actually thinking about what they're doing now, appreciating the people that they have. I'll just give you a, a small example. Um, for example, I'll, I'll talk about partners again because I think this is something that a lot of people relate to or even actually relationships in general, friendships, um, you know, parenting, child parent relationships. If you think about it, those, there are things that really irritate us about our partners, our children, our friends. It can be really, really annoying. However, if you kind of, this is what I, a tactic that I use sometimes when, when I get annoyed with my husband about certain things. Um, what would your life be like without them? What would your life be like without that person? If that person was to disappear or something was to happen to them? The thing that's irritating you is probably the thing that you will actually miss if they weren't around anymore. So just try and kind of change the way you see things. Okay, you know, everyone has their mistakes. People are always gonna irritate us, but just look at the good in that person and appreciate them and just think, well, if I didn't have them, I, I would prefer to have them with that flaw or with that irri irritating thing that they do rather than have them at all. And appreciate the relationship that you have. Don't waste time on silly things and silly arguments. It's really not worth it. And that way you are also enhancing yourself and your enjoyment of that person. So that is also self-love. My next point is, do what you love. This is very important. So um, sometimes on this show, we talk about um, people that have actually left their careers, changed their careers completely, gone into something completely different, and now they love what they do. And it's their passion. They wake up every morning and they, they go to work and it's not like work because you know, they just absolutely love what they're doing, or others it could be even their own business. However, I know this isn't always possible. Maybe what you love to do doesn't actually make money. You can't make a living out of it. So this isn't realistic. However, you can do what you love in your spare time. Make sure you have that time for your hobbies, for, um, Doing, doing the things that you really, like relax your mind. There's nothing wrong with that. People sometimes feel guilty for taking time out for themselves, but don't because it's important for you. And the last point that I'd like to finish on is don't let others walk all over you. Now, this one is very, very important. You need to love yourself enough not to allow people to hurt you. Of course, we all get hurt in life. People sometimes unintentionally hurt us and we that's where we have to kind of be mature and think well you know people make mistakes they we, we need to move on forgive people but in the case of where you have maybe some toxic friends in your life maybe a partner that's uh, puts you down or is quite abusive of course this is going into something completely different and that's where you have to say you know what I love myself enough I care for myself enough that I won't let this person or this situation put me down anymore and I'm going to do something about it that's really really important well everyone we have reached the end of today's program but don't forget if you have a story that you would like to share or you'd like to contribute in some way to this program or maybe you have some comments about past episodes we love to hear from you our lovely viewers you can email us on info at chrissybshow.tv. You can also tweet us at Chrissy B Show or leave a message on our Facebook page, The Chrissy B Show. And if you'd like to know more about me and my past struggles that I overcame, you can visit my personal website, which is mylifeafterdepression.com. Until next time, bye-bye for now. My wife has a very high... Sorry. My wife has very high cholesterol for her age and she has just been diagnosed as having a thyroid growth. If she does have to get <laughs> thyroidectomy. Yeah, well done, yeah. Okay, all right. Right. sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thyroid thyroidectomy. Thyroidectomy. Yeah, thyroidectomy. My wife has very high Hang on a minute. Can we have that minute? You're gonna bash it over my head. Three, two, one. My wife <laughs> <Sorry>. has. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, I've got this. I've got this. You've got this. Yeah. It's really hot in here still. It's it really is hot, hot in here. Yeah. <laughs>
My wife has very high cholesterol for her age and she has just been diagnosed as having a thyroid growth. If she does have to get a thyroidectomy, Chris, sorry, we're going to start when you said diagnosed. <laughs> sorry, diagnosed. <laughs> okay, next question, Rob. My wife has very... My wife has just gone off. Oh, it's come back on. Oh my goodness. Right. Three. Look! It is. It's power. No, I've charged it 67%. There's, there's something really weird going on. Okay, next question, Rob. My wife has very high cholesterol for her age and she has just been diagnosed as ha... <laughs> What's wrong with me? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Welcome to the Chrissy B Show. We're coming from Chelsea in central London tonight. <laughs> this person's saying, my wife has very high cholesterol for her age and she has just been diagnosed as having a thyroid growth. If she does have to have it removed... <laughs> 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 